All right, how's it going guys? It's your boy Andy, welcome to my channel. And today we are going to talk about Amazon S3 buckets. So basically I just wanna give you guys an introduction on what a bucket is, what features they offer, how you interact with a bucket, and, and when you would use uh, one of these Amazon S3 buckets. Okay, so what is a bucket? Um, well, the S3 stands for Amazon Simple Storage and a bucket is just a resource that's being provided and offered by the Amazon S3 service. Um, the bucket itself consists of data and it's metadata. The data can be anything, but in most cases it would be files like uh, PDFs, PNGs, uh, Excel, Word docs, just anything that's a, a static file. Okay, so you guys might be familiar with handling these types of files in your um, in your application already, um, but a lot of the cases uh, I see people they're doing it wrong. So if you're not using like an external uh, third party uh, API to handle these attachments, then most likely you're either storing it in the database um, as a as a blob object, and you're retrieving the bytes and you're processing it and displaying it, or you're just storing the static files inside your application. Now there's like problems with both of these approaches. The main problems with these two are scalability are very limited because if you're storing, let's say you're storing within your application like resource folders or something, uh, it's and, and you have like multiple instances of your app. If you want to retrieve that file again, right, you would have to see which instance of the app it's being stored in and then get the file from from the folder. That's not very safe because if that app uh, instance goes down, then you pretty much can't access that file. And same thing with the database. You can do it uh, with in the database. It's better than the first approach I mentioned. Um, but the problem with storing in the database is that databases take a lot of maintenance. Like you have to do constant driver upgrades. You have to make sure that there's like a separate instance that you're constantly syncing up with. And there's a lot of scaling that you have to do. Um, especially in the cloud, if you have a database, uh, you have to adjust like the throughput and like how many reads and writes it can do. And that stuff can get a little bit tricky, especially if you don't know exactly like how much you need and you're, you know, like you're starting off with it. So uh, the good thing is that if you use something external like Amazon S3, uh, it handles all that for you. So it abstracts all that away from you in, in terms of scalability and resilience it's going to be able to handle a high volume because it's dynamic. You, you pay for what you use. So instead of setting like a specific amount, that amount of traffic that you might expect to get, it will scale um, based off of how much traffic your, um, the, your app gets and like how often the API is called. And another thing is that there's multiple availability zones. They're so good at um, like replicating this data across multiple avail availability zones. So like, let's say if one instance like uh, of your file is not up to date or if, if it's not there then there are always like other nodes and other instances that have the file that that were are replicated across different uh, zones so you don't have to worry about um, like a single point of failure i just want to hop onto their site really quick on uh, amazon s3 um, to see uh, to show you guys that like they haven't uh, they're actually really secure they have an insane amount of uh, durability percentage, as you see here, 99.99, 11 nines of durability. It's one of their main selling points, and the reason is because, like, uh, you know, like they have these multiple availability zones, and you can see here, they automatically create and store copies of S3 objects across multiple systems. Another thing that uh, Amazon um, S3 buckets, what they do very well, is that they have this an idea of versioning. Whenever when you upload the same file or update the same file, it won't overwrite it. Instead, it'll provide, it'll give you a separate version. And this way you can see like, kind of like the, a timeline of your, uh, of your file. Um, another thing that's worth mentioning is the security. Amazon uh, S3 buckets, it allows you to like upload and retrieve different files based on the permissions that you're given. And these permissions can be given to users. Like I can make, I'll make a separate video about permission, basically permissions that can be given to users and also could be given to certain roles. And these permissions, it get, they get pretty custom. Like you can actually limit it to like certain VPNs. You can control like who gets to see the data and who gets to upload data. It's something you would have to set up in the console or through another API, but it's not something that 
um, you have to do from scratch. There's different ways you can interact with the bucket. Amazon gives you a lot of them. So basically you can do it through the command line. You can do it through a REST API interface. You can even interact with it right on the console itself. Like most of the time, if you're a developer, if you're writing your own app, you're gonna be interacting with it through a REST API. Uh, so the way that you can interact with it using a REST API is through these things called access points. And again, access points, you can just set up um, it, it is a little bit tricky to set up in the code because it requires authentication, make sure you have the right access. You can do it through the console, you can do it through the command line, but once you have an access point, you can interact with um, an S3 bucket through the access point and you can give specific permissions to that access point as well. So you can put files, delete files, and uh, also you know retrieve and get the files. Okay guys, so Another point that I wanna make is that this is not a one size fits all solution for storing attachments. Um, so we have to see what uh, Amazon S3 buckets are good for. And they're really good for um, reliability, fast and scalability. It's, it's very good with the Amazon AWS ecosystem uh, because if you have other services that you're already using, then S3 can integrate right into it. You can integrate different services like the IAM policies, uh, Amazon Glacier, uh, M like apps and Amazon EC2, like they're all there in the ecosystem. So if you're using it, then uh, you might just uh, go ahead and use this uh, S3 as well. What this is not meant for and what it's not good for is uh, one, archiving long-term and, and also if your data is like fast and is dynamic and fast changing. And also if you're doing like a, a SQL query, right? Like if you're doing like a, if you're constantly doing like a SQL query joining data and you need attachment data associated with like other data you have in your database, um, then it might, this might not be like the best solution, right? So you have to see like what your use case is and if it makes sense to, uh, to use this given the circumstances. But I would say like if you're doing like a personal project and since this is like AWS is like, uh, since they dominate the cloud right now, it's good to just to use it as a learning experience. But I, uh, I just don't want you guys to think that this is a one size fits all. Um, it's not and it, we have to go by a case by case um, situation. Okay guys, I mean this is uh, this is really all I have and thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know if you guys have any experience with uh, AWS and if you do, especially this the S3 bucket, if you have any experience. So yeah, just uh, comment down below, tell me something interesting or have any questions. So yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next time, take care.